Well, I finally broke down and bought one of Boker's 150th anniversary knives. Hey there, by the way. Um, last year, 2019, I did a video on Boker's 150th anniversary knives. In that video, I showed in the U.S. catalog, they showed 10 different models that were given a special treatment. They had green curly birch handles, um, special blade etches, and special badges. And um, they were limited to 150 pieces each, exclusively for the U.S. market. They also did the same 10 models in a brown curly birch with the special etch and badge uh, for the European market and the rest of the, of the world. I got a couple things wrong in that video um, because I was just going by the information that I had in the Boker USA catalog um, and what I could find online. But those were also limited to 150 pieces each. And uh, both of those series, green and brown, just use Boker's regular blade steel. But also in the US catalog, as you can see, they offered up four models with what they called steam engine Damascus blades and smoked chestnut handles. Uh, I think they might have offered a few more models in Germany because I have also seen, uh, in addition to the Barlow, uh, the Trapper, the 2020, and the Scout, I've seen the Davis Lockback and a few fixed blades. But anyway, at the time, you know, I, I, I really didn't want to buy one because they didn't have the model that I wanted in the series that I wanted. And um, I waited for that and never came along. And I'm also just kind of skeptical of knife companies limited editions because, you know, as you know, knife companies can make an unlimited amount of limited editions. But this actually is a pretty big deal. You know, 150 years in business for a knife company, there are not too many other knife companies that can claim that. I mean, it's going to be another, what, 14 years for Victorinox. It's going to be uh, another 19 years for WR Case. So it's really quite an accomplishment. And Boker USA right now is running a sale on these. And I was able to get this one for less than half of the original price. So I just couldn't pass on it. I want to thank Boker USA for a great deal and also for those nice freebies that they threw in that you saw. By the way, these obviously weren't hot commodities. Here we are a year later, and they're selling them for half price. But, you know, I know the paradox of collecting, and that is once these are gone and they're not easy to get anymore, people will want them more. Let me show you exactly how it came. I did get one of the uh, steam engine Damascus knives. I got the biggest one shown in the uh, U.S. catalog. Uh, it's not pocketable, but I figured that you're never going to carry a knife like this anyway, and bigger is actually better for display purposes. So uh, it's in this really nice kind of a frame presentation box. The panels are a, a plastic film that hold the knife in place. Uh, they've put this nice little golden band around it, 1869, 2019, 150 Yara, excuse my German pronunciation, it's non-existent. That's 150 years, obviously. Um, of course, I want to point out that uh, under that was a microfiber storage polishing bag. That's another nice little freebie that they threw in. And um, then we have a certificate. And um, so this is the 2020 model, not the year, but the model number 2020. And what it is is a single blade, a large folding hunter. We'll go through it here just in a second. But they also included this certificate. And so I want to spend some time looking at that. That's in German and in English. And uh, the English is you're here, on, here on the front. It's uh, Boker, the year 20, 2020 steam engine Damascus. Your knife has the individual serial number of 63 of 150. And then you open it up. Uh, German again on this side. And then English over here. So, blade steel, stainless hand-forged steam engine Damascus raindrop pattern. Well, stainless Damascus is pretty cool. It's not easy to do. Uh, hand-forged is cool. Most Damascus, I think, is hand-forged by custom shops, although there are some high-tech metallurgical uh, methods of making it. This was hand-forged. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, raindrop pattern, it's, it's really interesting. I'll show it to you in a minute. But what the heck does steam engine Damascus mean? Well, 
uh, in honor of their 150th anniversary, what Boker did was, well, first of all, they have out in the yard in front of their modern facility there in Zoligen, Germany, in front of the factory and the offices building, they have uh, some machinery from their old plant on display in the yard. What they are are large power transmission wheels from an old steam engine. Back before Boker had electricity, uh, everything ran on steam power. So these big wheels would uh, transfer the power from the steam engine uh, by powering belts all through the facility. And all the little uh, individual grinders and polishers and other machines would run off of these belts. So what they did is they went out and they cut a chunk off of the shaft of one of these old historic power transmission wheels. And they had that forged into this stainless Damascus. So that's really impressive. 180 layers, and the forger was Chad Nichols here in the U.S. Uh, I looked him up. Nichols Damascus, it's in Blue Springs, Mississippi, out in the middle of nowhere, Mississippi. But apparently that's a big name in Damascus steel. And you find Chad Nichols Damascus steel on a lot of high-end knives, and it's very expensive. It has a rockle hardness of 59, flat grind, uh, nickel silver bolsters, and smoked chest wood, chestnut wood handles. The reason they picked chestnut wood is because um, of their connection to this chestnut tree. You know, Boker has used the chestnut tree as their trademark or symbol uh, ever since the beginning in a lot of different variations and forms. Uh, matter of fact, the name of Bomberk, uh, uh, Tree Brands, uh, Arbolito, it's, it's all based on this, this tree. And the symbol was taken after a giant chestnut tree that used to tower over the family's original tool facility in Remshed, Remscheid, Germany. Uh, that tree actually, by the way, was uh, destroyed by lightning in 1925. But a piece of it was saved and made into an ornamental carving, a wall hanging, that, that actually is displayed in the CEO's office. And I was able to dig around online long enough until I found a picture of it. How cool is that? Now also, uh, incidentally, on their Boker's 125th anniversary, the, they planted um, another chestnut tree. Uh, this was back in 1994 outside of their facility. And you might be able to see that tree in one of these pictures. I'm thinking it might be the one in the background here, although it's awfully close to their building. Um, it could be a, a, well, that bigger one out there in the yard by the transmission wheels. Um, but anyway, very cool. And uh, so they've gone through a lot of effort here to include some historic uh, materials and some symbolic materials into this knife. All right, just a quick examination of this display box, and then we'll get the knife out. Um, some stickers on the back here. I guess some internal model numbers for the uh, for Europe and the U.S. They're the same. They end in D.A.M. for Damascus. Uh, here, number 63. That's my number out of 150. That uh, doesn't really say anything else on it. It's interesting. It opens down here underneath and then comes up like this. Took me the longest time. Um, this is just Boker's standard warranty registration paperwork. So this knife is very well made. Oh, and this is interesting too. They put a little blade tip protector on there. Knife is very well made, um, but it's not perfect. And I do have uh, two little minor fit and finish issues that I found with it that I'll point out. But overall, um, it's very nice. I'm very happy with it. And the point of owning a knife like this, or this knife in particular really, is for the extraordinary, extraordinary effort that Boker made you know, to incorporate historic and symbolic materials in it, and for its exclusivity. So it's just a single blade folding hunter. It's a slip joint. It doesn't lock or anything. It is large. Uh, let's just get the specs out of the way. It's five and a half inches in the closed position. Uh, with a three and three quarter inch blade. That blade's one tenth of an inch thick and the whole package here weighs 4.3 ounces. 
Now I'll say this, it's not the sexiest or flashiest looking knife I've ever had, but it does look appropriately antique. Between the, uh, the Damascus steel, kind of looks patinaed, and the chestnut, it's not, the chestnut is, you know, really just not all that flashy. But it does look, uh, I think, historical, which is kind of neat. Um, let's just take a look at the outside of it first, then we'll come back to the blade. Again, here are those smoked chestnut covers. And uh, here is the uh, special badge that they put on. Uh, it's the Boker chestnut tree, of course, and it says 150 Yara, 150 years. Now this brings me to the first little fit and finish issue. Uh, it's very minor, but as you can see, the shield does not fit in there exactly precisely. There's a little gapping over here. It's a little tight over here. I, I don't know how hard that could be, you know, uh, a round shield's the simplest shape to be able to fit in there kind of airtight, but uh, it's not very noticeable at any kind of distance. Now that is uh, silver in color. It is described as being silver. I've actually written to Boker to ask if it's uh, sterling silver or maybe something else. I do know that their 145th anniversary uh, camp knife had a uh, rhodium plated badge. Rhodium, by the way, is the world's most expensive precious metal. I didn't know that. Uh, way more expensive than gold and silver. So most things that are rhodium are just simply rhodium plated. So uh, nice build, very tight. Really nothing to complain about as far as the, the uh, you know, gapping or, or any kind of uh, rough spots. Everything's ground very carefully. The transitions are incredibly smooth pins, covers to bolsters. You see the brass liners there. Just your standard traditional construction. It's just very nicely done. Quite a big bolster on the front and you can see how this pattern tapers to just a little uh, bolster on the back. The blade centering is good. It's not perfect but it's good. Nothing rubs of course. Mostly in, in the middle there and the bullet Spring termination is nice and neat here. And then um, here on the back spring is where you see the serialization. Laser etched. They've given you your individual number out of the total number. All right, the spring tension on this is very strong. Uh, I won't, does not have a half stop. I won't give it a number. I think that's just too objective. My seven might be your six or eight, but trust me, it's very strong. It's tension for hard work. So here is this Damascus blade. It is stainless, uh, even though it's got a piece of old rusty metal in it. <laughs> and again, that is um, 180 layers hand forged by uh, Nichols Damascus, Chad Nichols, and uh, does have a piece of that old steam engine transmission wheel in it. This is the raindrop pattern. Very cool. This knife has got a wonderful edge on it. It's super sharp. As you can see it has a deep, long pull nail nick there. And here's something that I really want to point out that I think is special. So you can see the years here, 1869, 2019, that's uh, with the Boker symbol in the middle. That's the 150 years. But that is neither an etch nor an engraving. Uh, it's embossed on there. So in other words, those numbers are raised above the surface of the knife. When I run my nail like this, it comes to them and just stops. You might be able to see that. You can hear it. So I've never had a knife with that before. And I don't know how that's done. And so maybe if somebody knows something about that and can tell me how that's done, um, please educate me. I'm assuming it's done after the blade is ground. 
but it's really quite impressive that that is embossed on there. It's not going anywhere. It's not like something that's going to rub off over time. And that brings me to the Tang marking. So I really can't call it a Tang stamp. Uh, here you see Boker Zoligen. Zoligen. And uh, Boker has the umlaut over the O there. But that is not stamped into the metal. That also is embossed. Those letters are raised above the surface of the blade. So way cool, and, and it's put in a place here where it's not going to get scratched by the liners uh, or the pivot here. So I mean, it, it, there's no issue with it clearing, and uh, it, well, it does go in there, so I don't know how they do that, but... Uh, well, part of it, I guess. Again, very good, you know, closing retention. I, I'm trying not to snap this blade. Just, you know, I don't believe there'd be any kind of blade knock, but uh, I'm being out of an abundance of caution. I'm not, I'm closing it quietly. But yeah, you can just pinch this thing open. Again, it's really strong, uh, but the lockup is just absolutely rock solid all the way around. You, cannot get any slack in there side to side or up or down. Fantastic lockup. Um, this brings me to my second little minor fit and finish issue and that is just the mating of the back spring with the heel of the blade. Um, I know that this knife is hand assembled and oftentimes these things have to be hand matched but I just feel like they could have given a little more attention to um, the look of that back spring there. It just looks a little raggedy to me. But overall, it's a really well-made knife. Uh, it's based on a great concept, you know, using unique and historic materials. Uh, and it commemorates a real significant milestone for Boker. So that's what's really great about this knife. Um, Boker seems to do an anniversary knife about every five years. Um, they have anyway since their 125th anniversary, I know. Um, but I don't anticipate them doing anything this special, you know, like this again for quite a while. Um, maybe, you know, in 25 years for their 175th or something, they'll go back out there and cut some more metal off of their old... <laughs> off of their old... Um, uh, antique out there in the front but um, I'm keeping mine as an investment you know I got it at a good price they are very limited and when they're gone they're gone and I figure even if I only make five bucks on this in the future hey that's better than my money markets paying thanks for watching